Hello and welcome to Fully Charged, uh, coming from Paris, from the, uh, just outside the Place des Invalides in the middle of Paris, Eiffel Tower is just over there, and this whole area has been turned into a racetrack because we're here to see a bit of Formula E. We're not really concentrating on the race, but we're here to see how this technology is developing. It's three years now Formula E's been going, it's moved on enormously, we've been talking to the teams, uh, there's some amazing stuff happening, and we're really looking at how the technology in Formula E cars is, is, is seeping through to cars that we drive on the road. Amazing developments in power management systems, batteries, motors, uh, energy efficiency, all those kind of things. They're all being tried out and tested in these incredible cars and eventually they'll, they'll uh, leach down to the cars that we drive on the road. So this is Paris and this is Formula E. Yeah, it was really the purpose of this series. When we start to uh, define the concept, it was really to help the electro electrical uh, technology and electrical mobility. So working with FIA and with our promoter, we identify really the main parameter that we should put on a rule to make sure that we will benefit maximum uh, the road car. And this is what we did by having a, a power limitation. So it's not a, a power fighting, your arm race of power, right. and we put an energy limitation which forced us to perform energy management, energy recovery to really help road car development. Now the slight difference between Formula E and say Formula One is this is right in the middle of a city, right in the middle of Paris, and as you can tell it's not that loud, there's no fumes, there's a, well there, I say there's no fumes, there's a little bit of burning rubber, <laughs> yeah definitely smell that. And these are just uh, uh, qualifying laps they're doing now, this isn't the race, it's, it's very tightly controlled. We can only get so much footage of what's going on. And this race takes place all over the world, uh, and it did take place in London for two years. Uh, but it's not, not, it isn't happening in London this year, it's, it's, uh, it's happening everywhere else. So we've got to find, we've got to start hassling the Formula E people, if, you know, if you live in the UK. Uh, it should be in Hyde Park or somewhere like that, shouldn't it? It'd be fantastic. But, but it's very exciting being here today. Oh, oh. And I've got shades on like a proper motor racing fan. It's very exciting. While we were in France, we visited the Renault car plant just outside Paris at Flan. I joined a guided tour with a big crowd of motoring journalists. It took quite a long time because it's quite a big place. They really do make a lot of cars at Flan. And this is where they make the Renault Zoe, and I think it's really important to see just how much goes into an electric car because it's, it's very easy to say oh an electric car is more eco and it's more friendly and it's more fuel efficient all of which are true but they're still made in great big factories like this one this is a huge place it goes on for hundreds of meters in every direction What's happening here is that this car, the, the Renault Zoe, is made on the same production line as numerous other cars. So they, they produce the same cars, very much like Nissan do on their production line. So we're following the Zoe's production from being a, a, a piece of metal being pressed into it, its body shape, being painted and then uh, being fitted out, which is what we're seeing here. So let's have a look around. So what's behind me here are the battery packs for the Renault Zoe, both the, the new uh, ZE40 battery pack, which is 41 kilowatt hours, and the original 20 kilowatt hour battery. And there's a 
It's a robot fella there that's picking different batteries and they, they go from here onto the production line to be stored, to be inserted into the cars. Big robots, big orange robots. They're doing stuff to the battery. This is a battery construction department. So everywhere you look uh, in this amazing production plant, there's so much going on. I just, I could, I could stand here all day and watch the big, big robots. But inside there is where they put the batteries together. There's no human beings because obviously the batteries are a bit dangerous. They're charged up to about 47%. So they, they are containing an electrical charge. And so they, um, they just have machines doing everything in there. It's much safer. But I'm, I'm quite excited about this. These are the bolt dispensers. These are giving the, all the, they're giving the robots all the bolts. And that's from here. I didn't even know that. It's, big, it's going with little bolts going off. So exciting. Have a look. <laughs> you look at this here. <laughs> I love that machine. That's a great machine. <laughs> So Nicola, one of the things that I was really impressed with when I drove the new Zoe was the, the, the jump in the, in the capacity. I, in fact, it's a mix of different things, especially we change inside the battery, the cells and the push, and we try to increase the volumes, we reduce also the size between two, uh, two cells. So we work on the cooling system and we improve a lot of the cooling system. In fact, we learn a lot from the, uh, from the first battery right. that we take some security stuff or whatever or safety, uh, safety specification that we can go further and further. So we push the limit much more further on that. Right. And that was quite a, a, good, uh, a good find. And then there is another thing that we improve in the car to move the autonomy. So there is a battery that makes a lot of uh, yeah. a big jump, but there is also the car. So the car uses the energy more exactly, efficiently. more efficiently. So that's why we managed to double the autonomy. Yeah. Because I suppose, I mean, that was the thing that when electric cars first appeared on the market, you know, commercially available electric cars, and people would ask, how long will the battery last? No one really, really knew for sure, because you'd sort of go, well, it should last this long, but we don't know. And the, now you have a lot of data, you have a lot of experience, there's a lot of uh, uh, Zoe's on the road. So I'm assuming you know much more about the, the longevity we know of much the more. We know much more also the customer. We yeah. know much more the behavior, the way we are charging the car, so we can take more uh, or different specification to improve the autonomy and take uh, push much further, further some, some few specifications. So I, yeah. I think that by, by this knowledge, we can really improve the, a lot. Finally, I just want to touch on, because I heard you mentioning it earlier on, it is the, the second life. I mean, there's a lot of interest now in second life for batteries and for home storage. We already launched some product, especially in the UK, for example, with Statcraft, another, uh, one of the partners we've got there, with Connected Energy, and there is uh, already some batteries from Kangoo and from Fluence, which is in a container, and they are storing the, the energy to make some trading of the energy and renewable energy. So yes, we are on the way that now it's not only a PowerPoint thing, but it's really a product. Right. In the markets, we, we were the first guys who put some EVs on the market. So we are also the first guys who have a second large battery, which is great because we can really you know, make this market with that. And we are now really on the, on the on this, this time that we are launching really a lot, lot of second life battery and a lot of second usage. Yeah. So we are making some deal with utilities, also some deals with uh, some building makers. For example, there is in La Défense one big tower and there is four Kangoo uh, battery inside this tower. Right. Managing the energy and storing the energy from the PV and giving the, the energy for the canteen and for the uh, elevator right. in the morning when everybody go up wow. and then wow. store again the, so the that, energy. And that's already operational, that's that already is, yeah. installed. Yeah, right. yeah. That's so fantastic. 
it's still a beginning, so yeah. it's, that's why it's not published everywhere and it's no, not no. so easy to see that, but it's really, uh, the product is, is ready, so. And I mean, also, I'm assuming that when the, the difference in demand on a, on a battery that's in a building is much less than the demand when it's in a car, so presumably the, it's got a, quite a good life after. So it's for us, it's like, like a retirement or like a massage for the battery, so it's, right. it's really like that's when you, you when you've got the ba the battery in the car it could be in Sevilla it could be in Norway so the temperatures yeah. can be very different the, you could be a very smooth driver or you can be a sportive driver yes. uh, but when it's inside the inside the building I mean it's 25 degree flat we know the cycle we know what right. what's happened on the battery so no problem to, to to have this battery 10 years more in the, in the building or a second life so we so really have 20 years of, of 20 life. years of life for of a battery, life I, mean, that's the the battery. Thing, I think the thing people don't really because i think because most people's experience is a battery in a phone or a laptop or a tablet and they they do fade over you know two or three years you can see the difference whereas a car battery is it's a different it's definitely a different, a different and that's why we spend also, also a lot of time with with LG, for example, to manage the chemistry inside, because yes, the battery you've got in your, in your mobile is definitely not the same. So I'm about to go for a, I think I, it's, it's fair to say literally a spin in this with Manu, my driver over here. Uh, this is part of the Renault Electric show. They do, uh, it's really choreography, it's ballet on wheels. I've got no idea what to expect. <laughs> It'll be fine, it's fine, it'll be good. <laughs> the handbrake is hot now. Yes, <laughs> you've warmed it up. The handbrake is warmed up. I'm currently in a, a completely standard Renault Zoe 40 driving around the uh, circuit of, uh, of, the, of the Formula E uh, circuit in Paris, but what is unbelievable is how close we are to the car in front. We're just doing a little, little dance down the track. It is insane how close Manu, the driver here, is sticking to the car in front. I mean, I cannot, I can see no road gap. It's that close. And we have a, a row of cars behind us that are following us in exactly the same way. How he can be that close is just unimaginable. It's like, it's basically like people drive in Paris normally, so it's nothing that special. <laughs> U-turn. It'll be normal. Just, he's just doing a U-turn. Like, like that. Just like that. <laughs> it's actually almost impossible to describe what we're doing, but it's basically alternate zigzagging along the track. I've got to keep my arm out of the way of the handbrake because that is used, as you will see it now, quite uh, violently. <laughs> it's so close to the side. to do a little bit of help. As you can see, there's no one in the car. <laughs> when he said, I'm gonna get on the roof, I'm just keeping it straight. It doesn't really need much help, but that is very funny. He said, when I get on the roof, can you hold the steering wheel? He said it in French. Luckily, I just about understood. My French is just about good enough. Here he comes, Manu, my hero. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for getting back in. <laughs> Eric just folded away the most top secret Renault documents ever. <laughs> it said Trump presidential car. <laughs> Renault Zoe. Zoe. Yeah, yeah. Renault Zoe, wouldn't that be great? Nah. What I'm interested in is the, the, is the kind of what you're seeing around the world, the kind of big picture of the changes that are taking place. Yeah, clearly this choice of uh, moving to zero emission uh, car was clearly made by our CEO. Uh, more than seven years ago yeah. uh, and uh, we invested massively with our partner Nissan on uh, a full electric uh, range and I think this was really the, 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 the good answer and the only answer actually to two trends which are clear. One is the increase of the need of mobility 
because more and more people need to move and all around the world. And on the other side, the fact that we had to cope with some issues of the planet, with both air quality, CO2, uh, global warming, etc. And the strong thing with electric vehicle is that this growth since uh, we started has been stronger and stronger, even I would say, yeah, very strong. And it has been strong for uh, three reasons. And uh, one, the first one is the customer. It's very striking how happy are people who drive an EV. Right. Yes. And the satisfaction level of those drivers is much higher than other drivers. Right. So that's a very strong, very robust base for the growth of the market. Second is the technology. You've seen our 400 kilometer NEDC Zoe. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this Zoe is uh, really, um, uh, was not really planned like this right. five years ago. It came much faster yeah. than we expected. Uh, and third thing, the competition is coming. You can see in the motor show a lot of offer. We are on the road, they are still on the motor show, but people are coming. So this is also giving the choice to the to the customer so those are three very robust pillars to envisage very steady growth of uh, of this market so very soon we are starting some pilots now in the netherlands uh, at home right. so if you can through very simple apps during the night you basically let an electricity provider control the moment where you charge your car it will give you the, this provider will give you money for that right so basically you're doing nothing you're sleeping in your bed yeah. and you're saving money saving on your car right. just because you choose, or the, the, the uh, operator choose the moment he will use the electricity when right. the grid is less uh, stressed. Less under stress. So while the crazy young men are tearing around the streets of Paris at a breakneck speed, I'm sitting in a little more comfort here in a Renault Twizy. And that's all we've got time for for this episode of Fully Charged. Please do subscribe. Please have a look at the Patreon link. And as always, with all episodes of Fully Charged, if you have been, thank you for watching.